I'm Shirley Shedd. In 1984, there was a communication department then, and in one sense, one department was called communication, but it included English, foreign language, art, drama, speech, broadcast, journalism. It just was not working, especially as we went into more technology as we got into the um, 80s. And so in 1984, um, we had the approval to change to be the communication department, and the other department became the humanities. The speech, drama, art, and uh, English, foreign language too. So that's how the split came about. Interesting thing about this is that immediately we started to grow. We were growing already, but at one point we had way over 200 people in, in our majors. And this was also the time period that um, football started in 77. By the time we got into the early 80s, a lot of students were coming to Evangel not to play football, but because football sort of meant we were a bigger school, and so they came and we had, um, I think we had our highest enrollments during that time. I came in 81 as a professional, uh, as a professor, assistant professor. I don't believe we're the kind of department, and I'm saying we because even though I've been retired since 2006, but I've kind of kept in touch with them. But we're not just there to, reading out of, to be reading out of a textbook. Um, we are a doing department. We have to have uh, our hands involved. Um, again, I go back to my philosophy, though, of being an advisor, is that I do not believe that the faculty should be doing it for the students. They should be helping the students to do it for themselves. So they can then go out and do it on their own. I think the workshops are where students really have a chance to, to have the hands-on experience and to do it. And then they, that put, puts them in a position to place something on their resumes that is going to give them some extra oomph. And we have found out from recruiters and uh, other uh, people that work with the media uh, that this is what they're looking for. When, by the time you graduate, um, they don't necessarily want to train you. Now, there's always going to be some training, no matter what job you're in. But they want to hire somebody they know they can kind of pick up on, on it right away and then hit the ground running. For a while, the, the broadcast workshop uh, or the radio workshop was very large. In fact, we had a radio workshop before we had a television workshop. These things have kind of evolved. Um, when we started as a department, we had a radio workshop, we had a yearbook and newspaper workshop. Because all the broadcast majors, minors, everybody had to take a radio workshop, at times it was very large. And basically the only um, medium they had to work on was KECC. And that became a scheduling challenge because trying to get everybody to get their hours in so they could you know, do that. Uh, I think it was excellent when we went to, to the television and the radio and then ultimately into the Crusader media too. I know they've changed some things even since I've been gone how, with how the workshops operate and they've tried to be more in, uh, integrative with it. And I think from talking to Melinda Booz, that's the direction they're going now to try to integrate the workshops because re in reality right now in the media, you can't just say, I'm a journalist, without realizing you're a journalist in print and broadcast and online. That's so important, and when we would ask students when they came back uh, at the homecoming or whatever, what do you wish you'd had more of when you were here at Evangel? The one thing I got from broadcast people was, without, without question, more journalism. Because they didn't think they needed to know how to write stories and how to report and they got out in the field and found out that's what was expected of them. And nowadays, uh, the, even reporting the story on television isn't enough because it's gonna be appearing on their websites. And some of those stories on the websites by broadcasters are horrendous. I mean, maybe by print too, but you know, it's a, they don't think anything about sentence structure or, or grammar or anything. And, and so that's what I would think, I would encourage them to do is to to build more of that into the program because I think that's our weak point uh, in our program right here. I am not anti-technology at all. 
uh, you know, I, I think that's a strong point. But I think sometimes we forget that the basics start with reporting, getting the story. The story is what you're reporting. It's not just random ideas and thoughts, but you got to see the story, see the person behind it, see the people behind it. Like what they've done with the immigrant situation right now, where what are some of the best stories ever they, they talked to the mother with the two little girls that she tried to drag away from the, uh, the tear gas. That's better than saying, all oh, these people were running away from tear gas in mass because you get a picture and you have a person there. And I, I think that's the core of it. Everybody has a story. I'm preaching now. But everybody has a story to tell. And your job, our job as journalists and reporters, is to find that story. Because that's how the listener or the reader is going to identify and say, oh, that's something I didn't know, or I feel something by hearing that story. The broadcast teacher that we had had, uh, it was Dr. Don Piper, along with Dr. Norma Champion, who had started back in the late 70s, very basic broadcasting. But we hired Dr. Cameron Pace, probably one of the best decisions ever made. He uh, had the energy, the enthusiasm, the knowledge about the technology, and he kept up with the technology, which was especially uh, important to the department. We were, they were always upgrading, and he would come in, I, I really would like this camera, can we figure it out, you know? Or the auxiliary bought a, a lot of our equipment too. He took over that area, Chip Stanick was brought in to help with that area, specifically with the radio station, and then with uh, the digital aspect of it, the online part of it. Dr. Pace, Oz runs someplace, he doesn't really walk, I think he probably still does. And that was, you know, we were, can you catch Dr. Pace? That was always the thing. Can you catch Dr. Pace and ask him this? Because it almost was literally like catching him because he was always moving so quickly. Mrs. Pace Miller's ebulliency, it's her, her bounciness and her just out there kind of personality has brought a life to the department. Uh, that, uh, and, and we had some hilarious times too. Um, on trips that I took with her uh, to conferences. I think that's what I enjoyed about the department because we all seemed to enjoy each other. And we had, and again, I'm speaking for when I was there, uh, but we just had a good time together as well as in common, knowing and loving our students. If somebody were a broadcast student, that didn't make any difference to me. I cared for them as much as I cared for my journalism students. I'm hoping that's a feeling that students coming out of the communication department will have. That this was a home, this was a, a place that I was anchored while I was here at Evangel.